Um, I'm Isaac uh, for Pop Scoop, and we're at the Norwich Waterfront, and I'm here with the amazing Kate Nash. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. How's the tour been going so far? Um, yeah, really good. We've just been in Europe. We've just done like Paris and Brussels and Germany and Amsterdam and all around like Europe. So it's been really cool. Um, and then, yeah, well, this is the first day of the UK tour. So it's the first day of the UK tour. So on yeah, home, it's on home it ground. begins. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, you are a singer, songwriter, actress, musician, um, fashion icon as well. How do you how do you make all that work for you? Um, I guess I don't know. I just am a workaholic. I suppose I'm really lucky to work on things that I love, and that's what I do. Sort of twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. So that's how okay. I fit it in. Yeah. And um, your uh, how do you see your changing um, musical style and um, across across your three albums? So from two thousand seven. Um, up till now, do you see it as changing? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's progressed a lot. Um, I think, you know, from Made of Bricks to now, there's a lot of differences. Um, it's been seven years, so there should be, really. Otherwise, yeah. that'd be boring and weird. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just, I guess, like, this album, I think, Girl Talk's the, like, most honest and raw record that I've ever made, and I play bass on it, which is totally new, so that changes sound a lot. Yeah, so you have, have that as well as you're singing, of course. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I've always, I've always seen this great contrast between you know, your raw and, and real lyrics, and, and then the sort of magical, magical image behind it as well. And so you've got the raw, really true, true lyrics. Yeah. And then your kind of crazy circus, um, circus style of the music videos. Yeah, I think, like, um, with music videos, I just kind of realised... I heard Michael Jackson in an interview talk about his music videos as like he was like oh we made this short movie and the way he put that I was just like oh that sounds really fun whereas before music videos were always kind of like a drag because they mm. seemed like a scary prospect and just something that was like difficult to do and when he said that I was like oh that's really a good idea and then I decided to make them fun and come up with stories and um, because I like theatre and film and acting anyway it just seemed like a perfect outlet to sort of come up with different ideas that I wanted to act out and put them in music videos so yeah and I'm quite visual as well with, with when I listen to music sometimes I like won't like a record and then I'll hear it in a movie and I'm like oh, I love that song like so I think it's always nice it's just good fun I think yeah and how do you start out um songwriting do you do you start with a lyric or a tune or a mood what um, comes first? it depends I think probably a mood a lot of it's instigated by mood just being like ah, I need to get this out of my system um, like for example the other day I was in the car I was in a taxi and I was like oh I've got a really good idea for a Christmas song and I just wrote down all the lyrics so that I kind of had an idea of the song and the music in my head and wrote the lyrics um, I think now I, I sort of have more experience more skills I can write songs like that um, but I, the, probably the funnest way is with an instrument and being like playing like a bass line or guitar or piano riff or whatever it is like over and over and just coming up with with ideas and yeah. sort of fun like that. And is that by yourself or in the studio um, jamming as well? I like being alone at first because I get quite self-conscious and quite paranoid. So I like to sort of be on my own and get it all out. And then, and then I bring in people, like I bring in a drummer and then maybe my guitarist or whatever and jam it out and sing like vocal, uh, sing like guitar melody ideas. Or Like I, work, I have worked with really great musicians. So if someone gets you, then they're... They need to sort of, you need to work with the musicians that understand what you're talking about because it's not like language that is, that makes much sense sometimes. You know, when you're describing what you want out of a song and through an instrument, yeah. there isn't quite the right words sometimes. So, like, I'm lucky I, I have a, like musicians that get me and I'll be like, it's got to be like, and they're like, okay, yeah, and try stuff out and they sort of get me. So Yeah, you need people that just understand what you mean by that. Yeah, and, 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 and you know. Don't have to yeah, like you can try things out if they don't work. It doesn't matter. It's only music. Yeah. And what was uh, what was the first spark that got you into music? I mean, all those years ago. Um, we had a piano in our house growing up, and uh, no one played it, but it was there. And I, I started playing it. My sister started playing it, and then. 
my parents are big music fans, really. They loved, like, the Beatles. There would always be, like, the Beatles, Janis Joplin, the Stones, uh, a lot of Irish folk. My mum's Irish. Um, Harry Nilsson, Willie Nelson. Like, I remember, like, great music growing up. Like, mm. Deep Purple and... Um, yeah, like, just... And there'd be vinyl as well. But we had a record player, so vinyl would come out and there'd be CDs all over the car and tapes and stuff in the car. We always did long journeys up to my granny in Newcastle or in around Ireland and it was constantly, like, listening to music, so um, probably from my parents. Yeah, so having those memories there too. Yeah, a lot of memories attached to music, yeah. Um, and I'm um, the first drive that got you to sort of post your... Um, Songs on MySpace, my yeah. Yeah, well, that was really um, interesting. I got rejected from all universities and all drama schools, and I sort of had this determined plan that I wanted to be an actress, and this is what I was going to do. And and all my friends got into uni and drama schools, and I didn't, and I was, like, really disappointed. And then I got my final rejection letter on the same day that I went to see... Um, oh, what's that movie? The Cowboy one. Heath Ledger and... Yeah, broke back. Broke um, back Mountain. Yeah. And it's, like, really depressing ending. Sort of like, life just doesn't work out sometimes. You know, that's how I felt after watching it. And then and then I got my final rejection letter, and then I fell down the stairs and broke my foot. And I sort of dragged my broken foot out and went... Try, I was, like, determined to, like, not fall behind. I was, like, I'm going to see plays and things I found in time out on my own and I was dragging, literally like dragging my foot and I got to like Swiss Cottage on the tube and I was like, I think my foot's broken, I can't do this anymore. And I rang my friend and I just cried and like went to meet him and we just drank a bottle of red wine and I was like, oh God, I've got to do something. And then I had this like month where I was at home and I couldn't go out. And my parents bought me my first guitar for like 50 quid, my first electric guitar and bought my first PV amp and, um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to songwriting and as soon as I'm better I'll play my first show and I think like having that yeah, sort of goal like, yeah that yeah. goal that time like limit and also like the sort of boredom I was like working in Nando's at the time I was like really how did this happen you know like is this um, it oh. yeah I'm like I was my mum always said you know you've got to work hard otherwise you're going to end up in a dead end job and I was like well I did work hard and I'm still I'm like working in a fast food restaurant while all my friends are doing really cool stuff and I was like, I have to do something fun and then, and then as soon as I did that... Yeah, so it's all, all, all supposed to happen, I guess, that way. It's all, too. Yeah, it's all meant to be. <laughs> it's all written in the stars, yeah. And, you know, of course, you, you, you um, started and then grew so fast in terms of having, yeah. you know, your number two um, single, number one platinum-selling album, yeah. um, Brit, Brit Award, on top of all that, you know, know all within a short space of time. How is that to look back on now? Um, it's funny looking back on it because I think I was very numb, you know, very, like, had no idea... I don't know, I couldn't really grasp it. It was too much, too quick, mm. I think. And no one in my family's ever experienced anything like that, so it's nothing we were used to at all. And I was just telling the story earlier today that I remember getting my manager rang me. I was, at my, I was living at my mum's house, and I was, like, eating Weetabix at the kitchen table, like, on my own. And my manager rang me, and he was like, oh, made of bricks is number one. And I was like, OK. And I didn't really know what to feel, or I didn't really feel anything. And I hung up, and then I just sort of, like, finished eating my Weetabix and, like, put my dish in the dishwasher and, like... It's still a normal thing. Yeah, I was like, what do I do now? And and um, and I think now, things that happen in my career that that are exciting or, like, you know, cool, I, I feel it, and I'm like, I can appreciate it, and I'm, you know, I'm older and more in control of what I'm doing, and... You feel more that you can appreciate it yeah, and sort of understand yeah. it. And There's still way. lots of things I get stressed about, but, like, I'm aware of what I'm doing and I'm, you know, excited about playing... Sh I'm really excited about Shepherd's Bush this Saturday, like, really excited. And I've played it twice already, but it's still a really exciting thing. And, and I think, like, being a bit older and having had a lot more life experience and learned a lot of life lessons, I am very lucky to, like, do what I do, so... Yeah. And, um... How do you feel about uh, 
um, you know, the music business, social media nowadays? I mean, yeah. Is that something different than it was, you know, when you started back in two thousand five and seven? Oh god, yeah, it's totally different. Um, I was, even thinking about like Instagram and stuff, I don't. That wasn't around in the past like two years. That's just mm. taken off, and I think like there's really good things and there's really bad things about it. I've actually just written an article for the big issue about kind of about the internet and also about like there's a massive debate at the minute of like the sexualization of like pop culture and youth and, and I think the internet is really the main sort of thing that should be sort of um recognized as I don't know everyone's like are these pop stars in control of what they're doing or are they being told what yeah, to do and it's like do you know what that doesn't really matter like really that's been going on for years and it's not new that sex sells um, and it's not new that people will do what it takes to get rich and get famous mm. and knowing that sex sells like I don't find I'm not like worried if these people are making the decisions themselves or not because they want to you know there's there's a certain amount of, of like do want, wanting to be there and, and yeah. also I don't know them I don't know if they are or not like that's not my business that's not my concern I think what we need to sort of be addressing is the fact that like the blend of like pornographic images in like pop culture, music videos, and like it's all really blurred lines. What are we teaching kids, like young girls, about sex, young guys about sex? Mm. Like, what what is the message that we're sending? Because they are going to see it. Like, they're going to watch it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, you can't. Impossible they've got access to. to iPhones, iPads. Everyone has. Like, they'll have seen those videos and like. There's nothing you can do about that, and censorship isn't the answer. Like, we don't want people to just be like, oh, I'm so shocked, and we don't think it, we think it's wrong. It's like, that'll just take away everyone's rights to be who they want to be and do what they want to do. I think what it is about is accepting the new world, like, kids grow up fast, yeah. and it's, we're responsible for, A, educating them about sex, because um, they're going to see a lot of really shocking stuff really young, so we need to be educating kids and yeah, be real. we wouldn't have seen. Yeah, exactly. Without, yeah. Like, you know, you wouldn't be allowed to go to a strip club as a 10-year-old, but 10-year-olds now watch videos which is basically like being in a strip club, yeah. you know? And so it's more about education, I think, and, um, you know, kids are making jokes about raping each other and about, like, girls tweeting, like, I'd, I'd like to be here if it was by Chris Brown. It's like... They don't really understand what they're talking about, so they need to be taught about the reality of sex, the reality, the difference between porn and sex, mm. and the reality of like abuse and rape, and also making choices about your own body and being in control, and knowing all the positive things about sex too, yeah. and that it's like something for them to enjoy, and it's like when they're ready to enjoy it, they can make their own choices about it. And there's no point in trying to hide things from kids anymore because they will see it. Um, and they need someone. And the, and the mainstream, the responsibility of, like, mainstream pop culture is to, is to also educate and to show other examples. And our gross obsession with celebrity culture has got to stop, like... Because kids think now that the most important thing is to be famous. It's how many friends you've got on Facebook. It's how many likes you get on Instagram. It's like, that's all we care about. Mm. That's sort of the message that we're putting out there. And I think that is the most unhealthy thing. I don't think whether this pop star is being told what to do by a cigar smoking record executive really matters you know yeah I mean it's a hard thing because of course you know you you have a Twitter account too you have a blog so yeah. I mean it's important to it's important to use those tools but for something else I think yeah and in that way and yeah there's and great things about the internet it's like yeah, I mean it's helped me and my career so much and even through like getting dropped by my record label, it's meant I'm really in connection with my fans and I can still yeah, have a career really easily without... Ten years ago, I wouldn't maybe even be releasing a third record. I don't know how I would even know that fans existed. But um, it's just about sort of, I think, like with young people, it's like parents educating, but then some people have crap parents. So who needs, who's going to educate them? And we need like... We need like... I don't know, TV and radio and magazines like that are in the mainstream providing that as well. And stars like you. And, and me. Being out there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, having that message and, you know, no, yeah, the title, and like, Girl Talk as yeah. well, you know, you are sort of saying I, that, you know, I do want to have a different kind of talk on yeah. there and on your blog and everywhere yeah, totally. else too. So, you know, with your fans, I mean, you feel very connected to your fans, right? I do, through, yeah. Through that. Yeah, really. 
Um. <laughs> like I know a lot of them by name and stuff like just through the internet and they, they've they they've done a lot to support me so I like to I think we're just I'm really open and personable with them so that's why we've become like and they are with me so it's like that we're friends in a way it's kind of weird but it's cool I like it okay um, <laughs> I mean the last question um in terms of um studio work and live performances do you have a preference there um they're so different they're, I love both of them for different reasons and they sort of satisfy different areas of, like, you know, my creative needs or whatever. <laughs> and um, I guess when I've been on tour for ages, I get thirsty for, like, being in a cave and, like, creating secretly, sort of privately. Your time. And yeah, and it's really cool to... Like, this last record was just incredible. I was in, like, a mansion in L.A., with my girl band, we were living there together, and I worked with Tom Villa, who's just incredible. And um, and there was something like beautifully frustrating about that process because you will be really frustrated, and it's exciting, and then really difficult, and you feel like you're never going to get there, and then it's like hell, and then you get come out of it, and you're like, oh my god, we did it, and you feel really proud of it, and then. And a tight knit family too, in that way too. Oh yeah, which is good. You live in like a bubble. Be, it has to be intense. Yeah, so, intense, yeah. totally intense. And then, and then on tour is another kind of bubble where you're like traveling around the world and it's instant, and you like do a live performance and it's raw and ever something different can happen every night. And that's and you're meeting people, so that's like that's really cool as well. Okay, well, thank you so thank much. Thank you Kay. so much. Thanks. Great talking to you. Great talking to you. And we're quite excited about the gig. Oh, cool. Me too. Me too. <laughs> so we're looking forward to seeing you later. Awesome. All Thanks right. for well, having thank me. You, cool. Okay. <laughs>